speaking, I'm your host, Sophia Haynes. Legally Speaking is a public service of you and the law, a nonprofit whose mission is to provide information and resources to empower your legal affairs. Even though we provide legal information, there's no way intended to be legal advice. So if you have a legal issue, make sure you retain the services of a licensed professional attorney. Today we're talking about real estate and foreclosure in particular, and we have attorney Latanya McPherson. Welcome, Ms. McPherson. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us and sharing your expertise with our audience. Could you give us a little introduction and background about yourself? Okay. Well, um, I've been in the mortgage industry for over 25 years. I started out in real estate um, about 25 years ago as a loan officer. Uh, after that, I processed loans, I underwrote loans, I worked in the secondary money market, and so uh, just enjoying the feel of real estate because it's a people oriented business, I decided to go to law school and study real estate law. Graduated from law school uh, in New York, I'm licensed in both Georgia and New York, and I ended up uh, acting as a real estate closing attorney for some of the banks in New York. Um, after that, I ended up uh, getting involved in foreclosure, real foreclosure side, creditors' rights. Moved down to Georgia, met a few people, and um, I happened to buy a house in, in, in Georgia, and I met the builder, and she said to me, if you come down here, I'll give you my business. I came down, um, they, they hired me to start doing once I passed the bar, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a problem. Right, that would be a problem. Yeah. And um, so my career is, is um, full, it's unique in comparison to most of my peers because I have a full knowledge of the history and the understanding of what it takes to actually litigate these cases. Make a long story short, ultimately I, I got involved with being a real estate closing attorney in Georgia, had a number of builders, and of course the market crashed. Mm -hmm. And the market crashed just like it devastated uh, homeowners, devastated me as well. Of course my business was no longer there, and I had to decide to shift. So I decided to shift. I'm a praying woman, and I said, you know, I prayed about it. Um, I had a dream, God showed me in the courtroom. And I said, okay, it's time. That was my sign to shift. I talked to a few attorneys. Once I realized what was happening in the market, particularly to, um, I say, poor and minority people, I remember sitting at the table uh, doing closings and uh, how people relied uh, intensely on the loan officers telling them, don't worry. You know, um, we'll refinance you in two years. And I did I heard that a lot. Yes. And of course, we know what happened with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized that at that time, most of these folks would still be in their homes because they could have very easily gotten a FHA 30 year fix that they could have qualified for mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, been in their homes today. My knowledge as an underwriter, I understood what was happening in terms of these lenders because I usually use the example, for example, if uh, you had a first and a second mortgage. Well, if I was gonna lend money to someone and they started out at 8% for two years, and I knew that rate in two years could shoot up to 14%, well, don't you think as an underwriter I would wanna qualify, or a lender I would wanna qualify those homeowners at that 14% interest rate? We would hope that you wouldn't, but we do know that happens. Right, so as a result of that, the product itself to me was a fraudulent product. And we understand now that these mortgages that were being packaged and sold were nothing more than junk bonds. And they knew the lenders knew the market would um, do exactly what it did. That's why you have a lot of the investor lawsuits now. Now but we're going to talk about that, but I want to kind of take us back a little bit mm -hmm. to get into the whole thing because we don't take, want to take for granted that everybody knows all the terms that you're talking about. Right. So what exactly is a foreclosure? Okay. A foreclosure, generally in the state of Georgia, Georgia is a what we call a uh, non-judicial foreclosure uh, state, whereas in this state, when you purchase a home, you get a security deed. All 50 states are not the same. For example, New York, you cannot, if you default on your loan, the lender can't just take your house. They don't get an automatic right to take your house. They have to file an actual lawsuit and litigate. And a homeowner may have some defenses. Maybe there was notices or a failure to notice. There may be some type of breach in the, in the actual contract. Mm -hmm. Georgia, 
uh, is a non-judicial foreclosure proceeding. So when you purchase a home here, you get what you have uh, attached to the notice, also the security deed. Mm -hmm. And that security deed gives the lender an automatic right to foreclose. So when you sign those, those loan papers, uh, the day you close, you're also automatically signing a right, you're waiving your right, I should say, to allow the, the home, the lender to actually foreclose on your property. And uh, you may be familiar with the waiver of borrower's rights, which everyone, including myself, who had to sign when I purchased the home. In the so what exactly church. is that for those of us that may have just ran through and signed it up when they said sign here, sign there? Right. You know, what exactly is that? Well, every closing attorney at the table should be explaining these documents um, to, to the borrower. But a waiver of borrower's rights, what it does, you actually are waiving your constitutional right to due process. And that means that you have no, re basically you cannot stop the lender from automatically foreclosing on you. As I stated a few minutes ago, in other jurisdictions, in other states, they have uh, non-judicial foreclosure proceedings, which allows the borrower to raise defenses. They have due process. You have to serve them with notice. Because you have to remember property rights. Property rights, we have property rights. So what we actually do in the state of Georgia is give up those property rights. And I think, um, you know, this matter, given how extensive it is, I think our legislators, when, and I've been working with um, uh, some of the legislators, uh, try to push legislation to protect homeowners because this $25 billion settlement, it is a payout and people can argue that it, the bank still got away scot-free. But we, I, I believe Georgia needs legislation mm -hmm. and to empower our Attorney General with some enforcement rights. There's been some legislation, various bills that have not been able to pass um, in the state legislature, and I think what people need to know, which I tell my clients, you know, um, we need to vote, we need to organize, because your home is more than just a home, I mean a, a piece of property, it's your home. You know, I've seen, you, you have no idea some of the people that have come into my office and how this has devastated families, uh, you know, and my, we have a, a strong passion and I'll just go back how I ended up getting after I, you know, I, I was trying to shift. I didn't know which, whether I needed to go work for some of these lenders or well, what should I do. And like I said, I prayed and, and I knew this is what I needed to, where I needed to be. Because I really strongly feel as though Thurgood Marshall was fighting and I'm, there's no way I'm making a comparison. I'm talking about civil rights for us as a people, your property. And, and, and the value and how it creates wealth in our community. And I don't feel that there are really enough attorneys out here who have the understanding that we need to fight for these homeowners. And there go the grace of God. I could be me or you or whoever, you know, um, with the right circumstances, we could all be on the chopping block. But people out here really need help. And so, yes. How, you're telling us that it's not being done correctly. So if, God forbid, I get behind on my mortgage payments, mm -hmm. what is supposed to happen according to the law right now? Okay. What well, is that process? Okay. Well, the process is the same. Um, we, can't, we have to distinguish the actual settlement um, for uh, what we, they're labeling as robo-signing. doesn't deal with the actual extensive fraud that went on in the industry. Um, it's particularly focused on robo-signing. When, you, when the lender forecloses on you, there's certain documentation that they're supposed to do um, in order to bring that foreclosure about. Now, what is some of that documentation? Well, foreclosure process in the state of Georgia, they have to give certain notification to the borrower. They have to, according to your note uh, and your security deed prior to foreclosure, they have to give you a notice of acceleration telling you that the loan uh, various notices are due. So the acceleration tells me not all the money is due. Right. Well, as opposed to you making payments every month, you're behind now. So you need to make the entire balance due. Well, it's a process. They have a certain amount of time to send you a notice telling you that you're in default. And the notice, it has to state uh, who to make your payments to, who has the right to modify or amend those, that loan. Um, 
you know, you have a period, and a lot of homeowners don't understand that they may have a right to reinstate the loan according to your note. So is it at that point where I've got to go this, I'm behind, and now they're saying, we'll go into you're, 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 you're in default. Mm -hmm. So after I get the notice that says I'm in default, then what should I get next? Well, what you should get next is, is fairly complicated because there's been a lot of changes in laws depending on whether there are um, tenants in the property, it's an investment property, or you live there. But there's so the main thing uh, a, a borrower needs to know is that they should get notice. Now that notice, uh, most most foreclosure firms send that notice out, certified mail, to make sure that you received it. Although we have people that come in my office saying they never received the notice. Um, and is that multiple notices I should get before the foreclosure proceeding, or? Uh, one notice that I'm getting. Before. Well, you should probably get more than one notice. Initially, you will get a notice of acceleration. That's when the lender, you've been maybe three months behind, and it all depends on the lender. Some people own their houses and they haven't been foreclosed on. So that's part of the problem too, because there's no um, <laughs> standardized process among the banks with respect to foreclosure. And I believe with this new um, settlement and agreement, there's supposed to be uh, new procedures and policies set in place so that you have some type of standardized way of actually foreclosing. And now we want to, we want to get to that, mm -hmm. um, but I want to make sure that if I'm sitting in my house right now, that at least I know that I should have at least some notice of default, some notice of acceleration. Right. You mentioned something a minute ago about um, there's a difference between if there's a tenant in the property as opposed to whether you're the owner of the property. So if I'm a tenant, what should I be saying? Okay, let me clarify that. In terms of a notice, the state of Georgia requires that you give a 30-day notice mm -hmm. prior to any foreclosure action going forward. However, lenders really give more than that because they have to advertise mm -hmm. uh, prior to the sale. They have to legally advertise that notice in a daily uh, herald or daily paper in the, in, the the county county, paper. in the county where the property is located, mm -hmm. right? So they, you know, it, 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 they, you will have a little time. Uh, secondly, with respect to if the tenants in the house, the notices are different. The tenants under the Obama Act, which was recently passed last year, um, which applies to the states and the counties now with respect to notice and evicting tenants, um, they have to give a tenant a 90-day notice. And that's outside of, for example, you might have a, a mother and father who has a 20-year-old daughter living in their house. They consider that family, so that, that notice is not required other than the 30-day notice. And where is that notice coming from? That would be coming from the lender. So uh, how would the lender know that I have tenants in my property? Well, generally, when you get a mortgage, people, if it's investment property or not, however, you can have a home that you move out and uh, you sell. There's no real way for them to know it until they start the process. So generally, when a notice is sent out, they will say um, homeowner and all occupants on the actual uh, notice. So they sent it to the property address. property address. So what if I, as an owner, gave them another address as opposed to the actual property address? If I'm a tenant, because, you know, we've seen those stories right. where all the individuals are on the news or whatever saying, I was making my payments to the owner and now the property's being foreclosed and I'm put out. Right. Okay, this is a touchy situation. And again, I believe there has to be some type of legislation set aside to deal with those great areas because what happens is when you have a situation as you just explained where you have a homeowner who moves, rents the property out and have the notices sent to another address, which I've had, legally once the, the owner says send my paperwork here, the bank has to send that paperwork there. Now what happens when you have a tenant in that property, well then it's up to the homeowner to say, well, I have tenants in the property. If You can't hold the bank liable if they didn't have knowledge. So generally what they do in terms of an eviction, when they move towards an eviction, they will always put the homeowner's name and all occupants. So that covers that part of it. But right now, if you have a tenant in the house, the tenants do have certain rights. And that's a 90-day notice before they can be evicted not foreclosed on. Now, when you have people like you mentioned where they'll, you know, take money from tenants knowing they're in foreclosure, that's a whole separate issue. Okay, well, we're about halfway in. We take a break. When we come back, 
I want to talk about what is a homeowner's options if we did not go through that process so that they'll know what their recourses is and maybe save their house. We'll be back in a few seconds. You are tuned into Legally Speaking, a public service of You on the Law. You on the Law is a nonprofit whose mission is to provide legal information and legal resources to empower you in your legal affairs. If you would like to have a question answered or a topic featured on Legally Speaking, feel free to contact us online at www.youandthelawtoday.org. You can also sign up there on our website for our mailing list, as well as follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Remember, with every right comes responsibility, so know your rights and accept your responsibility. Welcome back. We're here with attorney Latanya. Latanya, Latanya McPherson, and we were talking about uh, foreclosure in particular in real estate in general. And before we left, we were talking about homeowner, um, the whole process of foreclosure. And now I want to kind of talk about options, whether I am a lessee in the property or if I'm a homeowner, if I feel like it hasn't been done correctly. We hear a lot about robo-signing. Could you tell us what is robo-signing? Okay. Robo signing is where basically what the banks did when they moved to, to bring the foreclosure uh, forward, they forged signatures on the documents in order to expedite the foreclosures. Clearly, it's fraud. Clearly, they made an admission. And that's why we have a $25 billion settlement uh, right now. Um, uh, it was two days ago that uh, President Obama's administration announced that uh, the banks have agreed to pay $25 billion uh, as, as part of a settlement package. This unfortunately does nothing for the people that lost their homes. Because so what do I, if I came to you and I feel like I may have been a victim of a wrongful foreclosure, they didn't go through this process, I didn't even know this is that you talked about. Um, what are my options to try to keep my home if I feel like I was wrongfully foreclosed on? Okay. But let me say this, I, 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 I'm, I'm glad I can say that my law firm has been able to stop foreclosures and also uh, get people back in their homes even after they've been foreclosed. Um, I've developed a model um, over the last year since we started that has been working. And um, so I'm, I'm happy to say that my, my clients didn't have to file bankruptcy. Um, and they were able, we were able to work to get their homes back. So what I hear you saying is it can be reversed. Yes, it can be reversed. What I'm saying is if a, if a lender, and you know as an attorney, it, you can't just say this is done. You have to be able to prove it. I mean, evidence. Um, but when people come in my office, I mentioned my experience uh, in terms of being 25 years in this industry. I know what to look at uh, and, and figure this out because of my experience as an underwriter, processor, closing attorney. Uh, you know, I'm able to look at documents and, and kind of see where the banks went wrong. So um, once you can identify that the banks have done something and what people, you know, there are a lot of scam. I mean, we get people that come in my office who pay $5,000 to people outside of the state. And what I really want to express, one point for me coming on the show, is to say to anybody, you don't have to use the McPherson Law Firm, but if you're going to pay money, go get an attorney. Attorneys are the only one besides yourself doing a pro se uh, a, a complaint who can fight on your behalf. It, you know, we have people telling us about forensic audits and what I try to explain to people, no one can sit and look at a closing package and know that truth and lending numbers will You have to file litigation, as you know as an attorney, do your discovery and ask the, the, the uh, bank for documents and then, you know, do an audit. So without that, just somebody bringing their closing documents to you with all these forensic audits. So they watch the uh, episode of CSI, that won't help them. No, that's not, not going to help them. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk, and you mentioned this a couple times, I didn't want to talk about this, the whole settlement with the DOJ, with the states, um, for this whole mortgage bust that we have. Mm -hmm. What exactly happened with the DOJ? What did the states actually agree to? Um, were any problems identified? You know, what exactly is that settlement? Okay. The settlement goes back again to um, the robo signing that the banks uh, it was uncovered, and again, I'm I'm so glad that um, there when this started there was attorneys across the country 
quietly fighting on behalf of people. Because if it was not for some little attorney somewhere trying to fight, when I mean, you get no kind of new laws and everything, you know, this is a huge area now. But those pioneers of one of my one of myself, I consider myself to be, who didn't push this. It this whole settlement came as a result of a firm that was fighting on behalf of people, filed a complaint, did discovery, and found that these it was uh, a trend. It sounds like exactly. When, but it had to take a, the suit had to be filed. So you know, if we didn't have that, people's rights will continually be violated. So what are the banks required to do underneath this settlement? Well, the banks have agreed a 20 to $25 billion uh, settlement. Um, now let me say this, and Bank of America is one of the, the, one of the banks who had to pay the most money. It's the major banks, Bank of America, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, and Chase, and Ally uh, Financial. Uh, what it does is, it does a number of things. It does, first of all, what it does is it will recompensate those homeowners who were illegally foreclosed on okay. by giving them up to $2,000. So will the settlement, is it some kind of way to identify those individuals that qualify, or is there something that I, as a homeowner, have been foreclosed on? Do I need to reach out to somebody to see if my foreclosure applies, or does the settlement require them to seek out? Okay. As we know, a lot of times a bank settle, and uh, for example, I wanted to give you an example of uh, uh, Bank of America Countrywide. They, they did a settlement some time ago for, I believe it was about uh, $80, mil, 80, 80 million dollars, or um, I think it was 800 billion, and I think they only did about 213 million. So when they have these settlements, people get excited, but What's the process? Most of the time, how can you how can you identify the people that lost their homes? They're gone. They lost their home two years ago. They moved somewhere. They, how are they going to find these people? So what I would tell the public is to contact your lender if you believe that you um, and this settlement deals with people who lost their house from 2007 up into 2011. And that's key. So that window of time, 2007 until 2011. And you should contact your lender and inquire as to, I believe that um, I lost my home due to wrongful foreclosure. What is the process? Is there, you know, obviously, there's going to be paperwork. Mm -hmm. Now, there, there are, have been people who have been getting letters in the mail because they've been coming to our office saying, if you believe, uh, you know, you may be entitled to some money. Again, I would say go to an attorney's office because the one thing this will not do you may get $2,000, and as an attorney, and you know as an attorney, they may ask them to sign over, have a release of any and all a lawsuit. That's my next question. If I participate in this settlement, will I lose my right to file my own individual action if I decide I want to do that? Okay. Quite honestly, I have not seen any of the paperwork yet um, that the bank, since this settlement just occurred, I'm sure the lenders are putting certain processes in, in place right now, but I would tell a homeowner Quite frankly, don't sign anything. Get the information and contact an attorney prior to you signing away because you know that two thousand dollars is not going to. You don't lose the right. You don't lose the right. This 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 uh, settlement. You still have a right to sue. Mm -hmm. However, we don't know if that paperwork that's coming from the bank. Here's a check for two thousand. I don't know if it's saying in that paperwork you release all your rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or even limit them. Right. So that's something I think. Get the information and contact an attorney to, and ask them to review your paperwork before signing anything. And that is actually a great point. Um, how long do you think before this whole process starts for the, the money to start flowing with homeowners? That's a good question. I think what, what is it going to take, first of all, when you think about the number of people that have lost their homes that cannot be found because the lenders are going to say, well, we sent a notice. Let us know the address, right? Mm -hmm. um, so most of the people who were hurt are not going to be able to take part in any settlement anyway. The other thing is that most, what I'm finding, and obviously uh, our people particularly don't have money for an attorney. 
Um, we take these cases on, and no, I'm not a not-for-profit organization. We get paid, but I try to work with my people. I meet them where they are. We set up payment plans, and I don't take frivolous cases. So if you come in and I look at that file, and I could substantiate and prove that something's been done, we take the banks head on. Um, we've settled, uh, in the process of settling some cases, um, we have a number of different types of cases, uh, mortgage fraud case, wrongful foreclosure, and one of the things I'm finding now is that the wrongful modification process, most of the clients that we're getting in now, they've been dealing with banks for two and three years, just trying to get a, for, a, a modification and can't get it done. So, well, let me ask you this, is, does, is there any other help in this new bill for people that may be in bad loans? I've been able to keep up my payments, but, um, we're bad. That's a very good question. This puts, see, again, this industry is so fickle. You have a situation now, and this is a good thing. Some of the, I'm, I'm not sure where it's all going to land in the end. We have, you know, the bullet points of what's going to happen. But if you're behind on your mortgage right now, they are talking about reducing your principal, which is a great thing. That is great. Um, they have programs that will allow you to refinance. So when you refinance, that'll be able to bring the principal down and the interest rates down. Um, today, unfortunately, uh, at the Congress Georgia Center, which they don't publicize, they're giving out up to 15000 to each homeowner who's trying to buy a house. Wow. Um, so that's but, good information to have. But it's today, and you know, how much was it publicized anyway? You know, people don't know. There are a lot of things going on. So, so what I hear you saying is there needs to be some due diligence Right. On, the, on the part of the homeowner as well. Right. There is a, maybe some things are not going exactly right, but we can't just say they did it. We need to make sure that we're giving right. about that. Right. Unfortunately, we are getting toward the end of this show. Can you believe the time flew by so fast? Is there anywhere, um, any resources out there that homeowners can find out about the new uh, settlement they have or foreclosure law in general where they can go and get more information about that particular time? Right. Well, I would say that the there's a plethora of information on the internet. Um, in terms of the settlement, you can just go in and put uh, on any website and put settlement, bank settlement, and you'll have all the news articles that will pop up. What I would suggest to people um, in the state of Georgia is to contact your state legislators, as I always do, know who they are, send them a, a quick email uh, asking them to uh, put forth some legislation in the state of Georgia with enforcement because just because this settlement happened does not mean the banks are going to do what they're supposed to do. Exactly. I, and I know there is no, I've been in touch with the Attorney General's office and had meetings with him regarding um, what legislation, if any, where's the enforcement. Mm -hmm. And their office really wants to be able to enforce um, and uh, protect the consumer's rights. So we have to keep pushing for legislation in the state of Georgia. But right now, I would say anyone out there who feels that they have been wrongfully foreclosed or have attempted to get a modification and couldn't and the bank is giving them the runaround, please feel free to contact us, the McPherson Law Firm. Yeah, I was like, I like you. <laughs> Where could I find you? Well, you can find us. Um, we're at 7175 Jonesboro Road. That's located in Morrow, Georgia. And our phone number is 770-961-4188. And we'll be happy to serve you. This is our passion. Uh, we'd like a little pit, pit bull for the, for the homeowners. Well, so. you need that. And I'm so glad that you brought the point of contacting your local legislators and your local delegation. They put some most pressure on President Obama, bless yes. his heart. But the rubber hits the road with your local people, That's your right. county uh, commission, That's right. your representatives and your senators, because they pass the laws that are enforced here. That's right. So even the legislation that the Obama administration got passed, it still has to be enforced on the local side. That's so correct. Um, they really need to get involved with That's it. Right. All politics, I say, are local. Absolutely. Thank you so much it's for coming. It's been a pleasure. Thank it's you so much. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you have to come so back and see us. Oh, I'd love to. Thank you. All right, folks, that's the end of our show today. That we want to thank Attorney Matt Pearson for coming out, and we will see you on the next episode of Legally Speaking.